Hey people, it's Ed, Dimension 6 Bud here. You may remember me from videos such as the most comfortable running shoes of 2024 and the shoe files. Today I'm examining the lightest running shoe in my collection and also one of the best that I've ever reviewed. How does the Metaspeed Sky Paris from ASICS shape up against some of the other top tier shoes from 2024? Let's check it out. Thanks for joining me on the channel people, it is always appreciated. Help me to fulfill my dream of reaching a million subscribers by clicking that button below. Also give this video a thumbs up, like and comment too. It helps out with the algorithm. Danke schön. I'm comparing the new cat on the block up against a host of other top tier super shoes. The third and much lighter version of the Alpha Fly from Nike. Sokini's top tier offering the Endorphin Elite. And the wild card in today's video, the Adidas Takumi Sen 10. I've got a mass of statistics together on all four shoes to help compare them. I think the most amazing thing about the ASICS Meta Speed Sky Paris is the weight of the shoe. I couldn't quite believe my eyes when I put this one on the scales for a UK 11 it's only 208 grams like 7.3 ounces and it doesn't scrimp on the cushion it's just kind of unheard of with my big flippers i are always a little bit heavier the lower stack of the takumi sen 10 is coming in 20 grams heavier would you believe you got about six mil less heel stack as well on this one versus the metaspeed sky paris 208 grams though is nothing when you compare it up against the alpha fly 3 this is 40 grams more than the asics shoe slightly lighter than that is the endorphin elite which is about 36 grams heavier than the asics metaspeed sky paris in fact when you look at it the endorphin elite looks like it's got a lot more midsole foam underfoot but it does actually cup around the foot quite considerably almost all the way around the foot with the asic shoe it's pretty much foam only under your foot there's very little there in terms of like a side wall to try and improve stability because you just don't need to in this shoe it's really interesting when you do some direct comparison against different shoes there's sometimes some dimensions and things you just never considered. The Endorphin Elite and the Alpha Fly 3 are pretty much exactly the same when it comes to outsole surface area. Certainly in the forefoot there, but also in the heel. Would you have ever thought that? Not me. 12.7 centimeters up front and about 9.5 centimeters in the heel. Those two shoes are practically the same price, coming in about 285 for the Alpha Fly 3 and 280 for the Endorphin Elite. You got quite a big step down there to the ASICS Metaspeed Sky Paris at 220 and then the Adidas Takumi Sen 10 which is 170 here in the UK. Though the Sen 10 isn't the narrowest of shoes in today's video, in terms of the forefoot the ASICS just takes it but they're both equally as narrow in the heel. So how is it that ASICS have managed to make a shoe that's super low in weight yet it's still propulsive and cushioned and forgiving? What is it about this model that makes it so good? I ran a half marathon pb in these the other day and the next day my legs felt absolutely fine it was kind of bizarre i was waiting for that sort of muscle fatigue to kick in but it never happened we'll kick off with the uppers first i think where we're trying to figure out why the asics is so good and you look at some of the other shoes we can start to see why they've managed to lower the weight so much there's loads of extra overlays and different materials here in the alpha fly 3 i think you could go as far as saying that it's the most plush of all four shoes in today's video. Lots of extra stitching and components that they've had to add in. In the Saucony shoe as well, we've got loads of other components that they've had to place in there to actually help lock the shoe round your foot. These kind of extra sections in the heel do make for a little bit more weight. Though, of course, they have tried to actually relieve it across the tongue. There's more holes there than a piece of Swiss cheese. I think that stretchy knit material in the Alpha Fly 3 goes a long way and does the heavy lifting in terms terms of locking the shoe around your foot. The two lighter models here in the Adidas and Asics really have very simple uppers, very few materials have been used. They've minimized overlays completely actually in the Asics shoe. The Adidas one being more glove-like in terms of the toe box. A little bit more forgiving and spacious here in the Metaspeed Sky Paris. Both shoes are certainly a lot lower in terms of profile around the foot. A very minimal heel in the Takumi Sen 10 and the barest of bare minimum padding in the ASIC shoe. I think if comfort is your bag, 
then the Alpha Fly 3 is probably going to be high on the list. Loads of padding here in the heel cup and almost no lace pressure on top of the foot. That's not to say I didn't find the ASIC shoe very comfortable over a distance, though the thinner tongue means you've got to get that lace pressure on point. Some people may suffer if they've got a slightly more voluminous foot and the same can be said for the Takumi Sen 10. It does have some additional padding here in the tongue but right up at the final eyelets there's very little there. So I think it's down to foot shape really. I've not had any sort of discomfort or problems with any of the shoes in today's video. The flexibility though in the Asics upper just is top notch for me. Just feels like it's ready made. Talking midsoles now, I really found the bounce that actually was delivered by the Metaspeed Sky Paris to be quite exceptional. It's really considerable there, lots of return, just like the Alpha Fly 3. That is very much though a long run shoe for me. I think you get more benefit from the Alpha Fly the further you go. And there's quite a lot of structure here that needs to break in within this shoe. You've got those pods and the foam. And there's lots of holes and space as well between some of it. I found it changed quite drastically over a initial 15 mile run so you absolutely do need to do that with this shoe if you pick it up and plan on using it perhaps for a half or full marathon it's got to break it in like a new pair of jeans the Saucony Endorphin Elite and the Asics Metaspeed Sky Paris felt really good straight out of the box. Not quite so much kind of break-in required. I think the Sen 10 was good, but it did need a little bit more break-in. I think it's down to those additional components where you've got the energy rods. Just need to pound that Light Strike Pro foam a little bit more before it starts feeling really good. These just felt wondrous out of the box. I think there's two categories here really with these four shoes. I think the Alpha Fly 3 and the Endorphin Dolphin Elite are very much kind of half marathon or full marathon shoes. They're crafted and tuned for such punishment. I think the stability based elements that you've got here with that foam wrapping around the foot and sort of cupping it, you've got that quite prominent heel area to provide some stability and the way that they've crafted the foam on the underside of the shoe as well helps to do that. And again, you've got that very prominent heel cup here around the back of the shoe in the Alpha Fly 3 helps to guide you through the torture test. Paris and the Sen 10 are very much more traditional type running shoes, I suppose, tongue in cheek. And I think due to that approach, they're a little bit more versatile. I think you can perhaps use them on a slightly more daily basis. I mean, the Sen is really a tuned five or 10K ratio, though many people use them up to the half marathon or even beyond. I think the Asics really is a cross category marvel due to that new foam. It's almost like a weight relieved super version of the Super Blast. Only foam here in places that you really, really need it. I think the trick though is the way that it's been implemented within the shoe. Now you can see the surface area here and the foam actually sort of protrudes out to the side somewhat. You can see it here, you've got quite a bit of extra foam on either side of the foot. It's right on where the ball of your foot is and when you hit that section of the shoe it really does feel a bit like a trampoline. They're trying to get that air zoom style kind of propulsive feel a little bit like the Alpha Fly. The new Flight Foam Turbo Plus here really does burn some dust. I think between this and the Super Blast, ASICs have really stumbled upon something quite special. I think the best super shoes on the market at this point. Nothing's quite as good for me, and also nothing's quite as light either. Imagine how much cushion that you're getting in the Super Blast as well for that lower weight. Imagine a Super Blast 2 with some of this stuff in it. And of course, you've got a little bit more depth to where the plate is placed here. There's more foam directly underneath it, kind of halving the foam up a little bit. Again, it just feels a little bit like that Alpha Fly, but without the very aggressive feel. The Sen 10's rigidity in the midsole is a little bit different to all of the others. It does feel a little bit more natural in terms of movement, probably down to those energy rods. So oddly, it's the most natural of all shoes in today's video. If you like that sort of responsive kind of feel, not that you're going to get an awful lot of ground feel in this shoe, I think this one's a good one to try out. Outsole wise, the Saucony and Adidas shoes have actually got a bit in common here. The rubber that you've got here in the outsole really has that coarse nature to it. Of course, you do have that smoother, more sticky continental rubber in the forefoot area of the Sen 10. I do wish there was a little bit more rubber in the heel of the Endorphin Elite. 
with that exposed midsole there is taking a bit of a pounding and this stuff really doesn't like water or moisture. That is a bit of a problem when you live in the UK. This is my brand new box fresh version of the Alfly 3. I do have the prototype version. I think I'm at about 70 miles on those now. So I'm talking from my experiences in that shoe rather than this one. There is some signs of wear in the rubber area in the forefoot of that shoe. The Asics though showing absolutely no signs of wear about 40 miles whatsoever in the rubber. Really is quite amazing. It's had a real beneficial effect, including some extra length to the rubber here in the heel of the shoe. And don't forget as well, these have been used for some harder training and racing. I haven't been babying them at all, so no disappointment here in the outsole. As always, the Adidas shoes seem to hold up best in terms of durability and longevity in the outsole, although they've sacrificed the lightness a little bit there. I found grip on point in pretty much all of these shoes. Maybe aside from the Saucony, this one doesn't seem to particularly like anything that's too smooth or wet, and I'm just a little bit worried about the excess of exposed midsole foam here in the medial side of the heel. When you're looking at prices here, I think the ASICS is really competitively priced. At 220, they've positioned it just right. A little bit cheaper than the Vaporfly 3 and substantially cheaper than the Endorphin Elite and also the Alpha Fly 3. And you've got a bit more cushion and that sort of forgiving feel than the Takumi Sen 10. Although, yeah, that is 50 quid cheaper. I think that Endorphin Elite's probably better if you've got some inherent stability wants with that almost cup-like midsole feel, though it's quite an expensive gamble at the retail price. I think there are some people selling that one at just around £200 at the moment if you keep your eyes out. I think the Sen 10 could be a really good training and racing shoe if you're doing those shorter distances, like the 5 or 10k. Durable, a bit cheaper, and you'll probably get a bit more use out of it within your rotation. So again, it's really horses for courses when we look at price and the use of the shoes. I think if you like the Alpha Fly 1, then you're probably going to really like the Alpha Fly 3. And it's, of course, in a lighter package now. The Endorphin Elite does feel like a supercharged version of the Pro 3 or 4. But oddly, that one feels more like the ASIC Super Blast in a slightly lighter package to me. The Sen 10 is more of a traditional running shoe. I use that term quite loosely due to the fact it's got a slightly lower stack, but the A6 Metaspeed Sky Paris is the perfectly tuned running tool. It's the best super shoe that I've reviewed so far on the channel, people. Ridiculously good and a perfect fit for me. Have you tested any of these models? How did you find them on foot? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Quick musical interlude for you. My hometown football team, Yeovil Town, have almost secured promotion back to the National League. We're top of the league, and I think we need like two more wins to make it secure. We play the local rivals Weymouth in a day or two's time, and then we could secure it next weekend. We've got a home fixture. It'd be great to actually do it at home. Go and check out the famous Yeovil track that got into the charts here in the UK called Yeovil True. It does feature quite humorous uh, take on how we talk down here. Well, I love the lyrics and stuff. There's like a little story there to it. I used to love Chuck Berry songs because he used to have these little stories within the verses. And it's very much the same here. A chap's talking about, you know, when he was born and his mum and dad got him into watching football, going to see the famous Glovers and then how he met his wife and then of course they had a little kid and then his little kid wants to go as well. It's that whole sort of generational story of Loving football, as we really do here in the UK. Or soccer, as it's known in America. Go and check it out, people. Yeovil True by Yeovil Town Football Club. Up the Glovers. Go on, yo. Hopefully my favourite player, Michael Smith, will be back on the training pitch and perhaps even playing by the end of the season. That guy is absolutely phenomenal. One of the best players we've ever had at Yeovil. I hope your recovery is going really well, Michael. Thanks for tuning in everybody, it's always appreciated. Do hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up like and drop us a comment as well. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.